6,000 kilometres from mainland France. The Caribbean island of Martinique is in crisis as locals protest through the night. It's been two weeks since demonstrations began against high food prices, culminating in curfews and injuries to police and civilians. Peaceful protests have continued despite the French administration's ban on action for parts of the island this week. We don't block the traffic, and since the last time they threw tear gas at us, despite the fact that we were peaceful, today we organised a show of force. But we know and we have understood that the police are not here to protect the people coming for shopping. They're following the orders of the big bosses. Statistics show food prices on Martinique are far higher than mainland France, despite lower incomes. Some residents say they've been forced out of retirement to afford food. It used to take me half an hour to do my shopping. Now it takes me two hours in a shop to buy just a few things in order to choose the cheapest. I don't know. We're bound to die. After banning protests over the weekend, the French administration has sent in a police force banned in the territory since riots 65 years ago that saw young demonstrators killed. The elite unit is rarely deployed in France's overseas territories, most recently opposing protesters in nearby Guadalupe in 2009. In the Pacific, officials say security forces in New Caledonia killed two protesters this week, bringing the death toll linked to unrest that began in May to 13. The overlapping crises pose a challenge for French Prime Minister Michel Barnier, appointed this month. The right-wing PM will host his first cabinet meeting in Paris today. Officials in the French Caribbean island of Martinique have imposed a 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew in parts of its capital to quell the escalating violent protests over the high cost of living. According to Radio France International, at least 14 people, including 11 police, have been injured, some by firearms as alarming scenes on social media showed vehicles engulfing flames, gutted buildings, and heavily geared riot police marching towards the protests. Let me pause here for a second. When will people learn, and this is something that other Caribbean islands and people who like to put so much faith in nationalism and in your government, overlooking the fact that your small government is controlled by people who do not live here overlooking the fact that many in your government are puppets to puppet masters overlooking the fact that the common people are so disorganized that we have very little control over the government as long as many officials and their family members are good then they don't have anything else to worry about they may have some type of love for the people but many people have dual loyalty they're serving two masters in fact i wouldn't even look at the common people as a masters they look at you as their subjects and they have their masters that they look up to so stuff like this right here is not a surprise to me they're going to keep squeezing and squeeze in. They're going to feel you out and squeeze you more and more to see how much they can get. So if it is a rightful thing for the people to push back, that is that is great. But what is the long-term effect? What's going to happen next is what I want to know. So I'm glad that the people are not simply rolling over and allowing government to do what they want. But I am curious to know what's the next step. Standing outside a completely destroyed McDonald's. Hear that? McDonald's. Who owns McDonald's? This is an international business. This is in Martinique. All people are created equal, right? But they have their business all over the world. Where is the Caribbean people that have their business all over the world? So we need to unite. We need to unite as a people. We should not have to rely on other people the same way they do not have to rely on us. This is not a hate thing. It's just a reality. So the pressure is on the men of the Caribbean, especially the men and the women, but men are the front line. The pressure is on us to step up and create things for our youths and our women of the Caribbean. And that needs to happen with people of African descent all over the world. 
if they really care about us, why do they want us to continually eat out of their hands? Then again, I have to ask the question, do they want us to eat out their hands? Or is it that we simply want to eat out their hands? Sometimes I feel like that is the case. They probably want you to learn how to fish, but we're like, nah, we want to eat out of your hands, master. We want to eat out of your hands. The Chains Martinique director, which is the McDonald's Chains Martinique director, Mary Kelly Rosas, told France 24 that it would take months to rebuild the restaurant, affecting dozens of low-income workers. And you see the cleverness there. I mean, this is the truth. It is the reality. But this is how these big businesses stay in place, right? They create opportunity. They create jobs for our men, women, and children. Because us local men ain't doing nothing. We are not coming together. Many of us are too busy killing each other. Many of us are too busy being goofballs and dancing around and jamming and winding, winding up our ways. And doing everything that is not productive to us. But in the meantime, they are coming in and they are setting up shops. They are creating businesses. They are creating employment for our youths. Right? And that is why they can always do what they want to do. The office of Martinique, France, appointed prefect James Christophe Beauvoir, said the curfew will extend to 23rd September. So that should have ended since last week. And this curfew was intended to protect the population and business and restore the law and order. So how is it you raising the price on the people is not affecting the people? Who is protecting the people from you? So you see how they flip this thing around and make it, oh, we're trying to protect the people. That is why the curfew is there, right? Vanguards, we need to be aware of these games, man. We can't have them looking at us as simple people. Right? They will never respect us if they can always use these simple strategies that you do in little kids. Like you're trying to force a kid to go to sleep or trick them into drinking some type of medicine. Until we unify, until we start having meetings with ourselves that excludes these people who have taken an oath onto other things. Because they can't serve us and solely us. Until we start having meetings and put our differences aside, they're going to continue to play us. Until we start paying attention to what is happening on the other islands, I don't care if it is a French, if it is Spanish, if it is an English-speaking country. As long as there are people of African descent there, we need to find a way to come together while respecting the boundaries of a nation. But we can never forget that we are a people first. Before we become a Grenadian, we are a people. We are people of African descent. Demonstrators say they were forced to protest after authorities and business turned a blind eye to petition to bring down the cost of livings. French nationalist statistics show marked disparities between the cost of living in mainland France and overseas territories, with Martinique residents paying an estimate of 30% to 42% more in food. My question is, why is it that France still own a country in the Caribbean? We know who stole land. We know that. We know how they benefit from it, right? Why is it there is no talk to overturn all of this? You know why? Because they have a lot of sellouts. There are a bunch of Africans within who don't want that. So what I think need to happen these people probably need to uproot and move to France and let people who really care about themselves and want to have their own sovereignty to take over the country. But we know it's easier said than done. France Interior Minister Jérôme de Manin last year pledged to tackle the issue of companies using their market dominance to inflate prices. But residents of the Caribbean island say they are still struggling to make ends meet. And this is going to happen all the time. You know why? Because we always cave through the smiling faces and the good gestures that people bring to us because we neglect history. How is it that in 2024, things like this are still happening? We need to tell these good people that, look, hey, nothing against you, but you cannot protect us from your snakes. You cannot protect us from your wolves and your foxes. So we need to take control of all of this right here until we get matters 
rectify. Rodrigue Petitot, the leader of the rally for the protection of the Afro-Caribbean peoples and resource, which has had an ongoing campaign to address the cost of living, told France 24 that the priority of the protest is to ensure people are able to afford food. So you can see, this is affecting the people of African descent. How are we not realizing that we are dealing with the same thing all over the world? Go to other Caribbean countries. What is happening here in Martinique is no different to other places. But we are so detached from each other. They, they have tricked us into this nationalism idea so much that we don't look at our brethren as our brethren. We see them as a Trinidadian, a Ketitian, a Virgin Islander, a Jamaican, a Haitian. That's how we see each other now. So the divide and rule from back in the days is working again in 2024, but in a different way. The Chassis Shalom, the business and cultural attach for the St. Lucia Consulate in Martinique, said there are other grievances at the heart of the protest. Martinique is supposed to be a department of France, which means that the people here are supposed to be on the same level with France. But there are many people who look at it differently and see that there are huge disparity in the manner in which France manages Martinique. In a sense that they believe that in a majority black country, all of the people who hold the highest position here are from France. Why you don't realize that we are at war? We need to stop playing around with, I don't care if it's a family member, mother, father, those people who keep us blind and keep us dumb and has softened up the Caribbean when the Caribbean is the first place that freed itself. With all the rebellions that's in, that has been happening throughout the Caribbean. How is it that we allow them to play us a sucker today? It's time for the vanguards to wake up. It's time for the vanguards to wake up. Why is it these same people who say they had nothing to do with slavery are still doing this today in 2024? Where are the good people? Where are all the good ones? They don't see what's happening. See, the good ones are not saying anything. Because they know that what the evil ones are doing will benefit them. They may say they don't like the way they are doing it. But what they do is take themselves away. The evil ones do whatever they do and then the good ones move in. The so-called good ones. There were so-called good ones back there as well. But they cannot control the evil ones. That is why we have to take matters in our hands. Shalom who holds dual St. Lucia and Martinique citizenship, said there is also concern about the ongoing impact of historical inequalities. You have the local white population, who some of them, whose grandparents and ancestors, way back to slavery days, owned plantations, who today wield most of the economic power in Martinique and own most of the agricultural land and own most of the business sector as well. Why is that a surprise? This is what we have been saying for the longest. Vanguard's been saying this. Check out all the videos. Our ancestors have been saying this. So the fact that we are still dealing with this is because people try to turn a blind eye. So it's time for us to wake up, right? Little by little. We don't need everyone to wake up because it will never happen. We just need a good 5%. 5% are Martinique, 5% are Grenada, so forth and so forth. And let us start doing business with each other. Let us start working together and let us start really analyzing and recruiting the right people to deal with and work with. Because we are at war. We are at war. It never ended. Our ancestors chased many of them out of the Caribbean and now they're back. And the ones who stay, they befriend the local people. They adopt the culture, they adopt the accent, and they continue to reap havoc. Strength respects strength. People don't care about all this turn the other cheek and God love you and, and, and what would Jesus do? No, they don't care about that. That is why when people commit a crime, they take you and throw you in jail right away. They, don't, they do not say, hey, we're going to wait 
until karma deal with them are we gonna let god deal with them we always do that when it comes to people outside people coming in and doing stuff to us but when it comes to us dealing with each other we don't do that so let's get it together